My name is Sean Walton Sr. and I am at the Miami View campus of Miami Valley Child Development Center's MVCDC. Part of my work has always been a passion for making certain that fathers understand the importance of being involved in their children's life. You know, oftentimes fathers think that they are an extra or a kind of a sidecar. However, that is not what our young people need. When you think about male engagement, yeah, our male engagement initiative, uh, that's okay. But when you think about a fatherhood champion, who doesn't want to be a champion for something? What warmed my heart is when we talked about the dialogue reading challenge and I talked about the different things that fatherhood champions do and what they could get involved with. They were so excited to tell me, yeah, I participated in that. Yeah, I, you know, yeah, I was, I was one of the readers. You know, they said it in a way like you could tell they don't want to brag, but they wanted to brag a little bit. So just the kind of the glee and their face lit up. Uh, just talking about it. But I was over at Rosa Parks. I was just getting finished with the meeting and one of the teachers said, hey, you know, Mr. Sean, we need you to come in and read. Absolutely. I'm always up for it. I'm here for it. I'm lit. The young people just don't know it yet until I pick up that book. But uh, picked up the book and it was just, like I said, extremely exciting watching their excitement. And because there was a male in the room, you know, which was me at that moment, they just could not get close enough. You know, the teachers were telling me, let's go back a little bit. I'm like, ah, we're okay. As long as they're not in front of anybody, because I know that they want that positive male energy. And just how engaged. So when I look at dialogic reading, wow, reading with dialogue, like that feedback, I got an opportunity to watch it come to life. The young people were, oh, oh, and pointing things out. I worked in the classroom in a way to make certain that even the teachers knew that I didn't feel like they were interrupting me or they weren't, uh, you know, being disruptive in any way. They were engaging. They were engaging. And that was, I'm here for that. Like I said, I'm lit. And by the time I left that classroom, those little people knew I'm lit. That's right. So part of what I role model is the fact that I'm extra. So men feel comfortable being extra. One of our fraternal orders or whatnot, you know, there were a group of men there who were volunteering for our touch a truck event. They're after it at Kings Highway and they were proud to let me know that we were readers, right? And they were looking forward to doing uh, other things with us. A couple of folks who I interacted with, you can tell that, you know, they were really like, they're blue collar. They were blue collar just to watch them come alive because they're being acknowledged. And here's how I love it. When I see um, one of the dads come in and let's say they're tatted up, they have a full sleeve, maybe a tat on a neck. All these things that people think disqualify a father from being a good father. Me watching that transformative spirit, because men don't always say a lot. You know, they won't always say, well, I'm glad to be included or something like that, but they don't always express that emotion. But you've got to see that transformative value, you know, I watched them perk up a bit when I told them, yeah, see, I need people to see more men like you in the classroom. I need the people to see uh, more fathers like you, man. Thank you for what you're doing. You know, that is what happens when you engage fathers. So it's not some anomaly. It'll happen every time that we include them and we value them and we let them know out loud. I appreciate you and you're good enough just the way you are. In fact, you're more than good enough. You are fit for what we need today in the way of being a role model uh, for the fact that all fathers and father figures hold value.